um, damage to the reactor, although I think four people are in hospital because of it. Um, but no, the real story is about keeping the cooling up and uh, that seems to have been done and that is um, continuing and uh, that gets progressively less challenging as power is restored and as the reactor cools anyway. Well, yes, and initially they, they tried using seawater, didn't they, to, to cool down the plant? And, uh, they were using seawater for some hours to supplement the, the amount of water that was there, yes. So what do you expect to happen at the plant now? I mean, we know that, as you say, some people were injured in the blast. We also know that three people have tested positive for, for radiation at mild levels, we're told. Very uh, what about uh, public safety? Uh, we've obviously got an evacuation in process. What will be done at the plant to try and mitigate any, any further risks to the Public. Well, they'll just continue what they've been doing very, very professionally, uh, and that is keeping the fuel cool. Uh, and with the addition of seawater, that would be give you a much uh, greater volume of water than they obviously had access to before, because I assume the water supply was interrupted by the uh, earthquake. Um, and um, I imagine they're pretty relaxed about it at this stage, though I don't know that. Okay. We we'll just have to keep uh, keep an eye on it. But uh, as far as I can see, um, it, it, I, I imagine that the evacuees will be allowed back in, probably in the next day or so. But we'll have to see. The, the, the government is very, very conservative in Japan, uh, in the way it uh, administers and, and uh, oversees nuclear plants. Okay. Well, Ian Hall, Lacey, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much indeed for coming in. You're welcome. This was how people in Sendai's airport terminal saw the tsunami rush past the windows. We don't know how many here have just left loved ones outside. Rakuzen Takata was devastated yesterday afternoon. And today the military discovered three to four hundred bodies in the remains of the town. And as survivors are plucked from the rooftops, others reflect on their good fortune. I was desperately trying to hold on to the shelves that were coming down on me, but the ground shook so much, he says, that I could not hold on. I fell and the shelves came down on top of me. But I was saved by a table that wedged in between. The areas already worst affected by yesterday's quake continued to be subjected to dozens of aftershocks. So far, the total number of dead and missing has been placed at 1,700, but given the devastation, that number, sadly, is only likely to rise. John, what word are you getting from the coastal towns? Well, it's still very confused, Christian, and it's very difficult to get exact accounts of what's, what's happening. We've all seen those ghastly carpets of black uh, water throwing their way through, carrying detritus with them. And what we're now learning from Mini Mishra Rika is that that is exactly what happened to that town, uh, a town of 17,000 people, 9,500 of whom are now missing, the only building left standing, the hospital, and a vivid account from a doctor there that the water level rose to the fourth floor of the building. It is tonight, Krishnan, as if two earthquakes Two tsunamis have taken hold of this country because what has happened is that they've had to evacuate all these people from the 40 mile radius around the power station and at the same time evacuate people who've been affected by the tsunami and the quake itself. It's